What's up guys, Evergreen Fly Guy. I'm gonna do a top fly for you today. I'm trying to keep this quick so we can just move on to the fly and don't have to watch the introduction. Giveaway, giveaway is still active. That is for a Mondo box. And as a bonus, if I hit 200 subscribers, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, I'm very close right now, 196 by Saturday day. Today is Thursday. I would, wouldn't be surprised if it didn't happen. So, extra prize, hand box of hand tied flies. This fly will be in there because I've tied two good ones. I'm doing my <laughs> intro on the post side, so my camera's close to dying. And they're doing mowing. So let's just roll right into it, guys. So now that I got that thread base down, well, not the whole hook, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to find the length of the hook. Then I take it to the end here. And then I'm going to pinch it down. And I'm going to wrap up on this a little bit to make a little bit of a of a body not too much making sure it stays in place trim this off I like to keep my fingers to the sides of it to make sure it doesn't wrap around because I want this on top wrap 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 get it real tight take it down to where I think it needs to be at right here just where the the barb meets right here. Wrap back up. Now at this point I'm gonna find some of my olive. Same brand, Nature's Spirit, I believe is what it's called. Apologize if I just got it wrong, it is relatively new to me. <laughs> I'm really liking this stuff though, I really am. Really think it's pretty cool. And I'm gonna find a nice pretty plume. I'm gonna wet it. There we go, and this is going to stack on top, so you can just measure with the other one to lock it, however you want to lock it in there. Some tightening wraps like that. Now I'll go ahead and trim this. Tighten all this up real good. to keep it real clean through here. Alright. So that's one, one layer right there. Now, uh, at this point, we're going to take our chenille. And the brand of chenille I'm using, I'm trying some new stuff. It's kind of like a cactus chenille. It might be just a hair bigger. This is Pearl, and it's Spirit River brand. And I'm liking it so far. A lot comes in the package. It's six bucks for I don't know how many foot that is. Probably got to be like 50 foot. It's quite a bit. It's well worth the money. You can trim back the uh, the sides of it to really get a hold of it, or you can just tie it in like this. I've done both, and honestly, to save time, I'm just tying it in like this. I'm gonna set my thread up here at the head of this. I I, I don't think it matters that much. It's really a preference for you. I like to pull this tight while I'm wrapping it and go around around. I like to keep it pretty tight. This is your body, so do it right. Keep your stuff looking good. I think one more wrap will be good, and I'll lock it in place. I also like to clean up around the head up here. And I'm gonna, you can leave it on there. Uh, if you plan on doing, in his video he does do a second row of this and he adds three layers of marabou. Because this is a smaller hook, I'm only doing, well it's, it's the same size hook. His shank is just a little, a little bit longer than this one. Uh, so if you plan on doing that, just an FYI for that. Um, I'm turning the hook upside down now because I'm going to add um, some more white marabou. Now I'm going to find a, another nice decent plume, kind of about the same size. We're going to get bigger as we go up. So if you see some really good plumes while you're picking your marabou and stuff, make sure you save them to the end. Like 
this plume I just found. That'll be at the end. <laughs> Let's see, I think I got another good one here. Jeez, I'm finding all the good ones right now. Couldn't find the good ones earlier. The real thick ones. But this marabou does have quite a bit of stuff to it. Now, you see where our beginning part ends. So I'm going to take and I'm going to stagger this back just a little bit. I'm going to try to lock it in real tight there. Right here around the, the hook eye up here. Now, like I said, if you're doing a larger one, yours is going to look a little bit different than mine. And you might, you know, you'll be like him and you'll add, be adding more of this chenille and more, more layers. Clean that off. Trim that up a little bit so it's looking good. I like to keep this real tight in here. I try to get my thread under that little tuft there so it pushes it up just a hair and that way you can kind of come in here and trim that and then you can clean it up a little bit more if you'd like you don't have to do anything too crazy to it because honestly we're going to be past it in a minute anyway you can leave it out like that you can tuck it to the side whatever you need to do if you want it out of the way that's fine it's all gonna it's gonna blend together here in a minute anyway so don't sweat nothing too hard on it uh, at this point you're gonna find yourself another piece of your olive marabou let me find a good tuft here decent tuft I really need to invest in some big packages of olive and white marabou of this brand because just look every one of these quills I'm pulling out is just excellent get this prepped up moisten it down same thing we're gonna stagger it off just a hair come in here and lock it down real good That was a pretty clean cut on that. Ooh, getting some fibers over here. Real, I like to get real tight up in here. Now I do have some green peeking up in the back right here. Don't really worry about that. It's not a big deal. At this point, we're done with this section. This is our tail section. We're done with it. Uh, double checking on my previous one to make sure nope that's all I did to the front there so I'm just gonna go ahead and whip finish this guy probably put like four around it and be fine close it up I'm gonna trim a thread I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put some of this hairline cement on it I'm using the hairline cement because it, it dries just a little bit faster. So I like this hairline cement for uh, little pieces that you're gonna be coming back to and you need something dried real quick. If you, if you got a while to wait for it, uh, I like to use the loon. But yeah. So here we go, there's our first, <laughs> first step. You can kinda see it looked like the other one. It's split apart right now. I'm gonna put it to the side for just a moment. We're gonna be back to it very shortly. I'm gonna grab this size two mustad streamer hook and I'm gonna grab a cone head so these are these are hairline and they are brass large size cone heads I'm gonna pop it on there I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my jaws get that adjusted how I like it there we go nice and tight so, in uh, Kelly Gallup's video, he uses a bead to keep this 
where he wants it, this cone head. Let me adjust mine here for a second. Put a little too far up. Um, I have a similar trick, but without a bead. I have a tiny bit of lead wire right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around a few times. Like you're trying to add a little weight, almost. Which, I mean, you are adding a little weight, but this is so minute that I don't think you're really going to notice it that much. Didn't notice it on the previous one. So, and then I just squish it up into the cone head. Um, you can grab a pair of scissors or just something along the lines of that. I'm going to use this jig head hook just to squish it up in there extra. And that'll set right there pretty easy. Um, I like to go right here back with some thread to keep it locked up in there in place. I'll run the thread through the wire a little bit and then come in behind and wrap down on it pretty hard. Probably like several turns and then come back. And now I'm going to go ahead and run this all the way down through here. Getting ready to attach a intruder wire for our back portion of the fly. Give it a couple little things up through here. I think it helps hold the wire in place a little better while you're trying to adjust it. Got that off there. Alright, so my wire has no brand or specialty to it. I got this out of the uh, like auction lot I bought. Um, I actually think it's probably, uh, if it's not intruder wire, because it's not really named, it's just little bits of uh, wire and it's pretty tough. If it's not that, it's probably musky leader or barracuda leader or something, you know, with big teeth, predator fish, so they cannot get your stuff. If it's not that, then it's, it's intruder wire. <laughs> Now we're going to take this portion, again, our little wobbly portion, we're going to feed our wire through and uh, I just find even sides and then I'll pull it up because it gives it a little bend there, it'll help keep the shape as you're trying to tie it on. Um, it's going to be basically just right off the butt section of this hook, like you're not doing anything crazy. I'm going to twist it around here. The only thing here, you guys know when I tie in my intruder wire, if you've seen my fly videos before, I like to keep one wire on one side and one piece on the other side all the way up. And you can do that here, you cannot do that here. I don't think it's really going to matter in this case that much. So, as you can see, it came together up here at the head, but that's fine because I'm about to chop it off. And this is pretty durable stuff. And I don't want to use my fancy scissors, even though I know they'll cut through it in like a second. But I'm going to use these old ones, and it's going to uh, it's going to be rough. But that's okay. We'll tie it in, get it out of the way, and protect it. There we go. Now we got that tied on there. I actually got this one tied in a whole lot faster and easier than I did the previous one. So we're making progress here. Now I like to go back through and add another layer of thread. You're not going to pull these off, honestly. A lot of people worry about that. Don't worry about it. These, the intruder, doesn't matter how you do it, it's, it's not really going to come off. So don't fret over that. You'd, you'd, have a, you'd have a really big fish on there if your stinger came off. And then even then, most of the time they're going for the main hook and not the stinger. So uh, I'm going to grab the... Uh, the loon actually this time I'm going to get most of it off, I just want a little layer just right down there like that just to add a double layer of protection don't even need to do that but if you're worried go ahead and do it get off that cone head, I don't want that on there don't want it affecting the cone head now another tight layer back around it just because I kind of want to cover that UV I just put down there so it's even more sturdy and as you can see this cone head is just stand up so if you don't have a bead or you don't want to do the bead that's an option you don't even need to do that honestly if you just want to keep it how it is 
you don't have anything created. You don't you don't have to do that. No one says you have to. A lot of people just like it steady that way they know it's gonna be good and stiff and straight on in there. Now, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and you can flip it around if you want. You can leave it like this if you want for this next tie-in portion. I'm gonna just leave it straight up. I'm gonna find two more white plumes, decently sized white plumes. And we're gonna add those just as soon as I find me two out of my stack here. I have two I like. I'm gonna wet them down with my fingers. Like I said, these have chemicals in them, so please don't use your mouth. Don't use your mouth. Please don't use your mouth. Because if you get used to that and you start getting all those chemicals in your body, you don't want that. So now, again, I'm staggering off the previous. So I got how, how much I want right here. I'm going to lock it in right here where the uh, barb goes up top here. But I'm also going to loosen it up on it and I'm going to drive this around to the bottom. So that's one side. So this is how we're splitting the hook here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that other plume prepped. Wetting it real good. I'm going to find it and like I said you can basically just measure off the other side. And uh, I'm going to lock it in. It's funny, you know, when you want stuff to be on the top, it goes to the bottom. When you still want stuff to be on the bottom, it goes to the top. You should just do everything backwards and fly tight. <laughs> no, not really. Okay. Now that we have that handled, I'm going to trim this right here. I'm going to trim this off, make sure not to get my thread. Adjust that back I'm a little loose right there, but that's okay. It's about to be real tight. And I'm going to crank up here so I know we're all in tight. All right. That is looking good, looking good. And we're just midway on that hook. That's all you need to know there. So, we're going to go back to the green, or the olive, and you only need one piece for this. Just find decently sized pieces, you know, you want to even it out, so don't use your biggest pieces at this step. Save them, put them to the side if you come across them, but good plumes, don't use some, like, little bitty plumes that was earlier. <laughs> um, I don't know about that one. While I'm finding these, let me take the time to mention again that there is an active giveaway on the channel for a Guggen Squad Mondo box. A lot of you guys are already entered in it. It's as simple as it is. Go hit that in the comments, comment your name, and get on, be a part of it. And uh, I said as a bonus prize, uh, if I hit 200 before the giveaway ends, I will throw in a box of hand-tied flies and I would be honestly taken back if I did not hit 200, so you will probably see this fly or one of the other ones in this box. So I hope you enjoy this fly and I hope it comes out well. Well, I know it'll come out well, the last one did. So same thing, green on the top there, locking it in place. I'm going to roll back here, get it where I want it, oh, one more I think will do it. Okay. Cut this excess off, tie it all in, make it all fancy looking. There we go. And I'm going to stop back here because this is a this is a repetitive fly. You're going to be doing the same steps over and over and over, and that's okay. Sometimes repetitive is the easiest. But this is a little bit of a complex fly. I've I've had this one on the list of ones I've wanted to do for a while, and I've just been I've been putting it off and putting it off because I'm like, well, that's kind of complex. It's there's a lot of steps to it. It's going to be a lot of time. But I finally decided that I was like, you know what? I want to do that one because I wanted to do some conehead stuff again. 
and uh, I got my piece right here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab hold of it, tie it in real strong, and I'm gonna set this right here. I'm gonna put it in my cradle out of the way. Real tight, a real tight anchor right there. And around. Now you can use your rotary vise if you'd like. Me personally, I like to just take it by hand and wrap it. If you have a rotary vise, if you don't, then you're just like me, you're hand wrapping it and I keep it tight. Personally, I like it like this. I like it better doing it this way. I don't, that's just me though. right there where I unevened it with the uh, olive okay tie it in you can leave this piece on here uh, if you want to if you think it'll be quicker for you you may leave it on I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna cut it because I like to get it out of the way then another thing I like to do at this point is I like to go ahead and put a uh, not on it just to kind of secure this in one position or another now here's where you're going to want to start finding your bigger plumes we're at that point now so uh if you want to start with a white plume first it, i don't really think it matters he always does bottom to top first and that's just how i'm doing it um yeah so let me find i got a good plume right here already And uh, I'm gonna stagger it. That looks good. Keep it on the bottom, lock it in. Right there at the bottom. And go ahead and you can take this and you can work it all the way up to right here and butt it up against this cone head go ahead and cut that out mine's a little messy so I'm going to try to roll it all in real tight If not, if you don't get it in too tight, that's fine. I mean, it's not going to make or break you or anything. All right, and I'm going to go right back here. You could pull that and leave it right there. I'm just going to stick it up here out of the way. So, same thing. Find yourself a nice uh, olive one. Uh, let me check the olive ones I've got, see if one of them fits my interest real well for what I want. I thought I had one pulled out already, but I guess I was mistaken. Mm -hmm. I like this one, okay. Alright, I got it wet down. And we're staggering. So, right here. I'm going to come up and grab that, and lock it down, cinch it down real good. And, uh, take and butt it up. Butt it up, butt it up. Come in here and there we go. Smooth about it as I can. Real tight thread wraps. There we go. <laughs> Trying to get all this stuff in there nice and tight. I like to keep it as clean as I can. because we're putting other things on here. All right, now, what do you think the next step is? Chenille again. So same thing. I got marabou all over me. Tie that in real tight. So you know it's not going nowhere. Come up there to your cone head and hide your thread out for a minute. Real tight anchor right here all the way around all the way around all the way up to the cone head
We're going. We're going. We're almost there. Almost there. That's good. I think that's pretty well unlocked in. If I can keep it there. Keep moving it accidentally. I'm going to trim off the chenille. If you were keeping your chenille connected, you're going to want to go ahead and trim it off here anyway because this is the final point. Um, same thing again. White um, olive, olive white, however you want to do it. Um, this is where you want your thickest possible uh, plumes. So find some really good looking ones. If you can find a perfect one, you could do one. Uh, most of the time you're just gonna have to just do two. I did two on the previous one. Get these prepped up. So this is actually two. I just kind of have them next to each other. And again, you're staggering, so I had to turn it to the side to kind of see this, where this one ends at. Right there. And you're going to drop it in behind the cone head, real tight. Real tight. And then you're going to cut out your marabou. And you, you're gonna have this this little tuft left here. Um, you can try to clean it up with the uh, with the thread. You can cut it out a little bit more. Whatever you think is gonna help. At the end, we're gonna put in a uh, a dubbing collar, and it's gonna cover most of it up. Unless you do it something like crazy big, and then you might have to work around that or find a better solution for that. Um, but I think. Uh, I think this is working fine. Uh, same thing with the top. We want two good plumes of olive marabou, potentially one if you can find one. It's they're pretty hard to come by a perfect one. So this is a pretty nice plume, but I I'd rather not gamble with it here. Sorry, I'm just scraping this off. Some of the bad off of this one. Like I said, I still I have these like right side by side. This is two plumes side by side basically. Get it in there real good. Get it real tight. Real, real tight. Get that off there. So now you see we have our... <laughs> you can see how it's gonna look just like the other one I guess showed you guys beforehand. Um, if you want, if you got something like poking out like I do over here with this, this green, because this green is very thick. And I'm just going to trim it up right around. Now at this time, you're going to take some dubbing. Now, this is ice pearl with a piece of a, this is the ice dub UV pearl. Uh, I have a couple packs of this stuff. I like it. I think it looks really good in the water. Uh, you really don't need much for the collar, so I'm going to space it out here, and I'll probably wind up pulling self, some of it off. So what the thing with dubbing is, is you, I feel like I'm almost always putting too much on there. I like to get real tight, too. So, I mean, obviously, this is a, just turned into a whole lot more than I needed. I'll try to pull some off the backside there. 
roll it back out to a nice little fine noodle. Make a nice lovely collar here. Move it up there. And now we're going to take it around. And around. Lock it in there. Take our whip finish tool. And we're going to whip finish this guy off. I like to put it right there, right behind that cone. That way I know it's nice and safe. There was three whips. And that was it, guys. My camera is about to die, unfortunately, because I have not changed charged it. Uh, that is that is that. I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and uh, I'm going to get you some pictures and some footage of what it looks like when it dries. So thanks for watching. I'm going to get you that. Be patient. <laughs> Okay guys, that is it rather quickly because my camera is very close to dying. Um, you can kind of see it pretty well here with the fiber splayed out. Uh, once you get it in the water and play with it a little bit more, this is all going to become more natural and more woven in together. Um, here's the one we did together. It still hasn't fully dried yet. I mean, it's a little, you could take it and move around yourself. But yeah, that's it for that.